him some tough ones out there. I think I bet Bobby Hall nine times, and I whooped him eight, seven, or eight out of the nine. But you had to whoop him. He come with a good dog. And Danny Burton and them boys, they were tougher than hell. And Diamond Jim was another, and Diamond Jim and that day, and Larry Jarrett and them, they was tough to get by, boy, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. What, did you ever mess around with, the, like, the Divine Boys and any of them dogs? Yeah, I met Don David several times. They didn't live about an hour from me. Uh -huh. They caught in that horse barn several times. Hell, they had a dog called Amy. They beat me twice with her. I finally went and got tornadoed and finished them off. <laughs> yeah. It was tornado seventh or eighth right, and maybe been her ninth. Right. She was a good dog. She was two good dogs of mine. Yeah. Uh, I know you, didn't you have a dog called Whitehead? Yeah. And what? you know, uh, that bitch right there was a beast. She killed all her litter mates at six weeks old and eat them. Dang. Bones, hair, everything. And shit hair and bones for two or three weeks. And this bitch six weeks old. Jesus. Yeah, and I fought her two or three times. And when I went to prison, she got stole from my yard. And then I know who stole her, but uh, Bill Little in Mississippi out there wind up with her. And they fought her a time or two. And then they sold her to John Gotti's son. And then... Uh, I think she was fought another time or two after that. Yeah. That's why I try she, to tell folks, people don't realize that, you know, everyone trying to chase titles and stuff. I was like, a lot of guys just didn't give a shit. They, them, a lot of them dogs were six, eight, ten, twelve time winners, man. Yeah. That bitch there, you're talking about a real rascal dog. Now, she looked more like an old rascal dog than anything I ever seen black and white headed and, uh, she was heavy in that rascal blood because she's out of Bubba, which is out of Otis and a rascal daughter. And then, if I ain't mistaken, I believe Blossom was her mama. Don Brooks and Blossom, bitch, were her baby. One of them was her mama, which was double bred on Rascal. Out of Rascal Jr. and a Rascal daughter. Mm hmm. So she was probably one of the heaviest rascal red dogs he was ever been. Mm. And them them, them dogs put a lot of mouth on. Ruby Red and Bubba. Yeah, they were. Ruby was out of Rascal Junior and a Rascal Woody bitch, and then Bubba was out of a Rascal Woody bitch. Do you remember? I know you mentioned them last night the old Red Savage Sam and Savage Bob dogs. Yeah, old Bob Costelli. Yeah, what happened Dave, to those Dave, dogs? Dave Costelli, he lived over here. He lived in St. Cloud. We, when I first got into dogs, first four, five, six years, we bought a lot of his house. Yeah. What happened to those dogs? They just didn't make I don't make know it? what happened to them. I didn't like them. They were red and then those dogs, red down off that wise Maximilia stuff. Mm-hmm. But, uh... I think Bubba whooped one of his dogs at one time, about his second fight or something. Right on. We fought at his house a lot. I think Turtle fought her twice out of his three. I think he fought there. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your, your husbandry. Because, I mean, I was always, you know, everyone seen pictures of your yard with the pads and Shady Lady and all that and, and the banana trees, you know. It's just a real classy looking yard, you know. And uh, that was something I was interested in. Uh, can you explain to them like how you, how you just let you didn't take the dogs and put them up off that pad? You kept them on that pad, you know. Yeah, I kept it clean. We had out pressure sprayers and stuff, and we keep them bleached and clean, sprayed off. And it just stay good and healthy. It'd, it'd rough to make their paws tough. That way, when you mill them, they wouldn't peel no pads or nothing. But it causing the blue little hair on their elbows and stuff where they laid around on that concrete. But 
Right. It was the cleanest, cleanest way you could keep them in. In Florida, that damn sand, you put a dog on a stake in a chain out there, that some bitch, uh, he'll be on a humpy stake. We'll be having a damn hole 20 foot deep, dug all the way around that son of a bitch. It's like J.W. Strickland's house. They do the same thing. They do it here, too. <laughs> yeah, J.W. had some big holes in his yard, too. Yeah. I got tired of damn raking and keeping the holes filled up. Yeah. And, you know, folks got to know that them dogs was, it was a professional yard. They were worked, walked, and handled and stuff regularly, oh, you know. Oh, people work. That's all work for me. That's all they done. Right, right. People got to understand that. dogs and walk, hand walk. Right. And they was always seven or eight dogs up one time working. I mean, starting the evening time, them boys hand walk, work with hand walk dogs and them in the midnight. Right, right. Yeah, I just don't want people thinking that somebody can go out there and stack up a hundred dogs and they're going to be healthy. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Hell no. Yeah. I had a vet. I worked for a vet part time, but he was a, well, we dealing that cocaine. He was on that cocaine. I had to give that some sack of cocaine. Uh, I called him. He come over. And I didn't have to worry about my dogs. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. That was during the eighties, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a wild time in Florida. People don't understand that. I'm mm, yeah. wide open down there. Yeah, it was. But you uh, is there anything else you wanted to get on here? Anything else you wanted to talk about? No, I don't know nothing in hell that we miss. Unless somebody wants to know, hell, if they ask me, I tell them. I ain't gonna lie to them. Tell them no bullshit. Yeah, that's what that's the main thing, you know. I mean, I you just you got no reason to tell any stories. I mean, you know what I mean. There's just no reason for it. So I wanted folks to hear about them, you know. The, uh, A lot of people you hear shit that uh, it's passing this one to that one. I mean, three, four generations. It ain't nothing like it was. And, right. and Ninety percent in places I was there. Right, right. And that when snake and damn. Jeep, Charlie, them, some of the best was put down. I was right there. Right on. So, guys, um, I guess if you got any questions you want to know anything about, just leave them in a comment, and uh, we can probably get around to doing another one in a week or two and answer some of them questions no, for you. It's like I say, if somebody got something they want to know, if I know it and can tell you for a fact that I've seen it and know it for a fact, I'll tell you. you might not like it. Some, a lot of people don't like the truth. No, they don't. And that's why a lot of people are, don't like me right now. You'll hear them, oh, I don't want to talk, blah, 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 but, you know, I'm just no, telling you. they talk it. a lot of shit about me, but uh, it don't make one fuck to me. Uh, I ain't hard to find. You got a problem with me, come see me. Right. I've been, I've been here that long. I'll be honest with you about it. If you ask me something, I'm going to tell you. For, if I know, if I don't, I'm going to tell you no, I can't tell you that. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's good. And and I wanted to, you know, to get that some of them, you know, stories out there for people. You know, there was a lot of you know, misconstruction about these, what happened in the past, you know, as well as I do. Oh, but. yeah. They just, them, it's always going to be that about anything. Right, right. Always going to be that bullshit. And haters going to hate, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but. Well, Mr. Ricky, I know you got a busy day tomorrow, so I'm going to let you get to bed. And uh, if, uh, you know, anybody wants to ask him anything or whatever, we can uh, damn sure get it to him and, and find out your answer for you. Yep. You need, need something from me. You got my number. And, and you're welcome here anytime, so. Thank you, sir. And you have a great night. And I sure appreciate it, man. And you do the same. And. Good night to everybody. All right. All right, well, we take care of yourself. Yes, sir. All right, folks, that was it. That was uh, the first interview with Ricky. I'm sure some of you guys will have some questions about things and whatnot. I mean, there's so much more to, that that he just blew my mind with some of the stuff we was going over. So, But, I mean, there's only, you know, so much that you can think about when you're talking to somebody. But, uh... There's so much more. I mean, it's just, you know, if you guys think of anything, you're welcome to ask them. But like I said, remember, this this was back in a different world. Don't go thinking that you can become a cocaine cowboy and, and get 300 dogs and do it like Ricky did. 
because the the end is not a good thing. You can ask him about that too. Uh, just uh, enjoy the history of the animals and uh, you know raise your dogs, breed your dogs, hunt with your dogs, and and keep it keep it kosher, and and you'll be fine, guys. But um, anyway, folks, I hope y'all enjoyed that interview and it shed a little light on the, on the different levels and the different areas and the different type of things. But uh, y'all take care. Y'all keep on bulldogging and have a good day or good night whenever this comes out.